Dr. King broke the law for staging peaceful protests. He was put in jail in Birmingham, Alabama. While he was in jail, eight prominent white ministers from the area publicly condemned his actions. They didn't like the timing of his marches, and they didn't like how quickly power dynamics were changing. They told Dr. King to wait for white people to eventually come around, and that in time, if he were to stop making trouble, they would come around. When Dr. King heard this, he was angry, and he started writing his response on paper that his lawyer smuggled into jail. In his letter from a Birmingham jail, he labeled these men as white moderates. He believed that the white moderates stand in the way of civil rights because of their inaction, more than the KKK because of their hate. Despite his anger with the ministers, Dr. King signed off his letter by saying, yours for the cause of peace and brotherhood. And by using these words, he's calling them in, compelling them to see the bigger picture. He's telling them, to paraphrase from his letter, that the absence of tension or negative peace is not a substitute for the presence of justice or positive peace. As Dr. King sees it, we are all a whole, a body of people that can only really accomplish things when we stand together in support of one another. Because ultimately, we are not all whole when even one of us is denied justice. It is up to everyone, especially those with privilege, to see this to stand up for what is right, even when it is uncomfortable and unpopular, and as long as injustice prevails, the present is always the time to call it out. It may not be convenient or easy, but it's always a good time. In fact, our Unitarian Universalist faith calls upon you to do so. Our second principle, justice, equity, and compassion in human relations, calls upon you to do just as Dr. King says. We are not the white moderate. We are the white liberal, political definitions aside. Dr. King has reminded us where we stand with our faith, with our faith, with justice, equity, and compassion. All eight of the ministers were men of faith. Faiths that were built on the ideas of love and compassion as well. But they allowed themselves to be complacent in their faith put their personal comfort above what their own religion called upon them to do. We cannot allow ourselves to be complacent in our faith. We cannot allow our values to slip away and use our seven principles as a shield. We must be vigilant in upholding values of our faith, which align with those values of Dr. King. The values that promote justice, to show, that tell us to show compassion to all people, to follow our conscience, and to fight alongside those who need us. <clears throat> Dr. King's words still resonate in our world, decades later because of their power and truth. Letter from a Birmingham jail pushes us even farther. It forces us to confront our own biases and complacency, and it can sometimes be easy to excuse ourselves from blame in situations like this by telling ourselves, well, not all white people are racist, but in truth, we all have work to do. It is up to each and every person to challenge ourselves to do this hard work for the betterment of the whole. In the words of Dr. King, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly, affects all indirectly. Let us take these words out into the world and use them as an opportunity to reaffirm our faith and to fight for the world that we want to live in. <laughs>